the volatility, it's been going on for several weeks now, and it's not just apparently because of Elon Musk. Why is this still happening? You know, Bitcoin's always been extremely volatile um, since I've been doing this 2013, 2014. You know, we've had plus 10, minus 10 percent or even more um, daily swings for a long time. That's just kind of how Bitcoin is. Um, but, you know, if you really zoom out and look at this um, over a multi-year time frame, it's a pretty unmistakable trend of being up and to the right. Um, and, you know, we had Bitcoin, you know, just really sort of go through the ceiling for about the last six months. And so I think it would only be natural that it's not going to do that forever, right? I think it would be natural that we have some sort of pullback. Um, and so, you know, as Ed said, I think there is a technical level around 30K. We're all watching that and we'll see what happens. So the question is, is this going to be a multi-year down cycle like last time, or are we going to kick out of this sooner than we think? You know, I, I'm really not sure we're going to have a three-year down cycle like we did from 2013 to 2017 and 2017 until now. Um, you know, to me, what's really fueling this is honestly what folks are doing macroeconomic policy, right? Um, we've had, you know, trillions of dollars being printed and spent. I think it was something like $6 trillion alone in the year 2020, and it's ongoing. And I think a lot of people, when they looked at that, you know, from institutions down to, you know, just ordinary people, they thought, hmm, maybe I should uh, find a hedge against that. So typically that's been gold. Uh, and a lot of people started looking at Bitcoin, thinking that, you know, at the very least, this looks a little bit to me like digital gold, right? A little bit like gold store value. Um, but updated a little bit for the digital age. And I think that's a narrative that really took hold um, last year and you know, even now. Um, but I also don't think we're gonna have you know, this major sort of peak and trough like we did the last couple of cycles. Um, I think this time around, a lot of the applications, a lot of the use cases that were promised in cryptocurrency, we're actually starting to see. I mentioned Elon at the top and I wonder if you think, given that his comments certainly propelled some of the latest volatility. Do you think his influence on this market is unhealthy? You know, uh, I think Elon, Elon is having fun with this. Um, I think that his comments in their actual substance are really hard to take very seriously. Uh, for him to come back after, you know, a month or so of saying, oh, you know, I didn't know that it has an energy profile. I mean, honestly, it's just pretty disingenuous. That's like saying you don't know where meat comes from, right? Um, it's hard for me to think that many people are actually taking that comment seriously in, in its substance. Um, and uh, so he's certainly sort of triggered an upswing, also triggered a little bit of um, a downswing here. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I think that Bitcoin has many other things that are sort of driving the market dynamics. Um, and so I'm not too concerned about Elon Musk kind of longer term. Um, and I think that, you know, this has kind of been our, the, the industry's maiden voyage with him. And I think that there's also been a number of people in the industry that have, uh, you know, just kind of stopped listening to what he's saying. Uh, meantime, you just came back from the massive Bitcoin crypto conference in Miami and still, you know, a massive amount of people there. And yet still it feels like mainstream audiences are still trying to understand this. Do you think we're at an inflection point or have we passed that? You know, I think there is still so much potential for the broader sort of blockchain, cryptocurrency, digital assets industry. Um, I think that where we are even now, right, um, is still like really just early innings. Um, uh, for a while, you know, years ago, it was really just Bitcoin and there's like this whole ICO boom from a few years ago. But now we really are seeing um, something that appeals to a, such a spectrum of, of, you know, potential folks to get into this industry. Um, I mean, one thing that is really substantial, um, decentralized finance, we call it DeFi for short. Um, you know, that is, um, there's like $60 billion today locked into uh, various decentralized finance uh, platforms. Um, and that's, you know, that's real, right? So it's not just sort of purely speculative up and down um, and, you know, up and down again and again. Uh, there's actually sort of real utility coming to this ecosystem. Now, you're investing across the crypto landscape, and I'm curious where you're putting your money and also how you stomach these wild swings. I mean, obviously, you've been doing this for years, uh, but with, with the microscope on these big price swings, it's, it's just a mm -hmm. reminder of how, how hard your iron stomach really needs to be. 
Look, I'm not going to lie. It's not fun, right? Two weeks ago, there was like a 50% drop over the course of a week. And, um, and that's absolutely hard to stomach. Um, you know, for me, um, I think when I think about sort of where a lot of value is going to be created in the future, again, decentralized finance is something I find to be tremendously exciting. Um, fundamentally, what you've got is you've got liquidity pools um, that, you know, previously have always been managed um, and, you know, priced and so on and so forth um, by, you know, banks. That's the purpose of a bank, right? And now you essentially have the ability to do, to do this um, with, uh, with computer code, which is like so crazy to even think about, but you can essentially self custody, right? Uh, a, a large amount of, of um, money actually, just even in your browser uh, and do pretty complex transactions with it. So that to me is really the start of something phenomenal. Um, that's where I'm spending a lot of my time uh, and looking for both platforms and applications that really facilitate that. Um, you know, up until now, the Ethereum, which, you know, um, is also, you know, fairly prominent, um, Ethereum has kind of been the platform for a lot of de decentralized finance, but I think there's a number of um, other competitors who are really making strides in that space. Uh, but no question, Emily, um, when you wake up and there's, you know, like 20% drawdown, it doesn't feel great. 